Okay, in this video, I want to give you some very specific social media content pillar examples. And make sure you stick around because I'm gonna give you three tips for brainstorming your content pillars in less than three minutes. So first, if you're unsure what content pillars are, I'm not gonna cover that in detail. Here, I have a whole video explaining that. So you can click over to that for further information and then come back over to this video. But here, I just want to give you some specific content pillars and some examples for three different industries, just so you can get better insight into what that might look like. So first, I'm going to give an example Three examples, if I were a life coach, three different things that I might talk about. So the first thing I might talk about is mindset. Mindset is important in almost any area when it comes to, I find business or fitness. So this is maybe a great content pillar for those industries as well. But a lot of times when it comes to personal stuff is working on ourselves in the way that we see ourselves. So mindset things might include videos. It might include quotes. It might include examples. It might include stories. That can all fall into my mindset pillar sharing content surrounding that. Next up is just relationship tips and advice. That is something that's widely searched for on the internet. So I might have a pillar just talking to things that people might ask questions about, or you know, you can search different message boards or get a, a an idea of common issues and relationships and be able to create content on social media surrounding that. And the type of content that can fall into there can be anything depending on your brand personality. It can be memes and you can have a caption that gives advice. You can record videos. You can create a graphic, like an actual graph with an infographic. There's just so many mediums and medias that you can use within this pillar as well. So we have said mindset, we said tips and advice. Another one might be resources and tools. You might talk about your book recommendations or course recommendations or websites. Uh, different things that you think might be of value to people. Now, mind you, I haven't even mentioned actually promoting your service or actually how you help other people. So that's something also to consider. So moving on, let's give an example for a nonprofit. Now I'm going to share three content pillars specific to nonprofits, but can also be used in other industries. I think an important one is always news, relevant news within the industry, especially something that highlights the need for your nonprofit. So news and update, that's a great content pillar. Two, facts. Although it seems similar to news, news is more like updates, but facts. Let me give an example because I'm, I'm thinking of a specific example. So for education, say it's an education nonprofit. You can share, for example, as of this time, the president just delayed student loan payments again, right? That's relevant to the education industry. So you could share news and updates about education. However, a fact might be how many people have student loans, how student loans impact people. This is a fact. It's not really an update. It's not really news. And then another pillar could be management tips for managing your student loans. And it could be tips surrounding anything in the education space, but I'm just giving a, a good example of tips. Um, or it could be such a stressful thing. It could be, if this is on brand for you, could be um, humor related things about student loans. I'm reminded, if, and if it's content curation, there was a TED talk, a YouTube video. So it's called Poetic Stick Up. Put the financial aid in the bag. This video came out 10 years ago and I love it so much. It only has 300,000 views, but I think it deserves way more. But sharing 
things that people resonate with. So I will put this under, I don't know, you can call your pillar whatever you want, but uh, <laughs> comedic relief. I don't know, but things that resonate with people. It could be a meme. It could be a video around this that resonate within your industry that hit home about student loans, but have a humorous aspect to it. So content pillars can look however you want them to look. The important thing is separating them out so that they go towards your goal for social media, that they serve a purpose. And I think something like this would be great for your brand awareness. So my final product is a productivity app. So three content pillars for this. One could be how to use the app, ways to operate it, um, tips for getting the best use out of it. And a lot of this could be videos or infographics, step-by-step -step graphics that will work great for a productivity app. Another one is this kind of covers, again, tips. I mean, tips really in the industry, educational, really does do well. So for example, if it is a sleep app, um, you can share tips for getting better sleep, tips for making sure you go to bed early if that's your thing, just tips around the space. So we have how to use, we have tips. And another one could be company updates. So I know a lot of times in the application space, certainly specifically for a client I'm working for, they have several updates every quarter. So it's important that we're constantly communicating that information to clients so they understand how to get better use of their app. So again, these are just examples. There's no right or wrong. It's really about what works the best for your brand to help move you forward. And it's just a resource to ensure that your content is consistent and making sure you're reaching your goals. So now I'm going to cover three tips for brainstorming your content pillars in less than three minutes. The first one is to start by having only three to five content pillars. That's a great baseline if you are unsure. One thing I didn't mention is lifestyle. If you are a personal brand, including aspects of your personal life that are relevant, especially to your brand, your product or service can be a great content pillar and a really great way to connect and humanize your brand. Two, you always want to include social proof as a content pillar. I actually didn't mention any of those in my examples, but having social proof is a great way to establish trust. And this can be testimonials, reviews, and user-generated content. Now, a pro tip, when you get a little bit more advanced, you can actually include testimonials as one of your media inside of another pillar. So for example, if someone has a certain mindset concern or a certain myth, you can actually have a testimonial that speaks to that. But that can be a little bit more advanced if you're just getting started out. It can be confusing depending on where you are in your social media marketing and management journey. So just getting used to creating and putting out social proof, putting out testimonials and reviews and User-generated content can work as a content pillar just to get you started. Now, in my program, The Social Media Accelerator, where I specifically help Gen X working on their next steps, working on their second act to build their service-based business using social media, we talk about content pillars and we create social media content pillars that are simple to understand to get them started and ensure that they're consistent. And then we go back through and we optimize so they can get even more advanced and learn how to create these testimonials within another pillar. And the third thing is consider your goals. Are your goals to sell, simply to sell? Or is it also to engage and educate and provide value? Knowing this will help you come up with your content pillars. And again, you only need a few to get you started. Follow me for more social media tips for your business.